Uh, users are su suing Juul, J U U L. I hate them for their name already. For so. addicting yeah. them to nicotine. Uh, San Francisco based e cigarette company Juul Labs is under pressure from parents, schools, public health advocates, lawmakers, and the FDA for its popularity with young users who have gravitated to Juul's discreet rechargeable vaping device and nicotine pods. Now come the lawsuits. So there are three complaints. Two, at least two, are seeking class action status in California, I think. Uh. And they claim that this person, Caitlin McKnight, became addicted to nicotine salts and now vapes several jewel pods each week. Uh. Can anyone speak to how much a pod is? Is that a lot? I think they come in different it's dosages. How many? Do you know how many milliliters it is? Because I can tell you how much it is. Somebody look up jewel pod milliliters. Yeah. Um. <laughs> then another person purchased jewel to help him quit smoking, but the intense dosage of nicotine salts delivered by jewel resulted in an increased nicotine addiction. See, if you're doing it for the purpose of cessation, you might want to determine how much nicotine is in it as you're working on that. Yeah. Like. Okay. So. Is it really not known that nicotine is a drug? Is I, this? I, I don't know. To tell you, it's like yeah. This is this is the part where it's like yeah. We've been warning you about this for decades and decades and decades. Yeah. It's like, did you not know nicotine but was addictive? These addictive? people have only been away. I've been alive for two decades. So. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on the Jewel website right now, uh, and it says uh, that one pod is intended to replace one pack of cigarettes with about 200 puffs. How many pods a week? Uh, fifth, this 15-year-old girl, or I don't know if it's the same person, but one of the people is 15 years old, was up to several pods a week. So, oh, several packs pass. of cigarettes a week. Oh, my God. Like, that's that's terrible, but, I mean, I know people who are up to packs a day. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not so, also saying that that's anything So, so look, our, our, you know, our, my view on this is it depends a lot on how it was marketed. So to the extent that it was marketed in a particular way, then maybe there's a plausible claim, claim here if it's like, you know, but really you should be aware that, you know, smoking is not necessarily the greatest activity for your health. Yeah, and, and what does it have any, does it have anything to do with it, the fact that these people started smoking when they were below the legal smoking age? I don't think you can buy vaporizer products under 18. I would no, imagine that. They've already limited it. You can't buy vape products under, under it's a federal law now, so. And how long has that been? Uh, anything oh, wow. with nicotine has always been regulated. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. Yeah, so the 15 year old it, isn't even no, in their market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no time when, when a 15 year old could have bought a nicotine, nicotine vape product. Maybe, maybe a zero nic. Because it's, it, because zero nick is not like ca like caffeine free. It's it's actually zero nick. So maybe they could have bought like zero nicotine vape products, but not nicotine filled ones for sure. And yeah. they definitely can't buy uh, zero nick now. That's that's illegal now. They've regulated that. So only even if it's zero nick, you you have to be eighteen to buy it. Yeah. Uh, they're apparently saying that because lots of young people use Juul, it was impossible for them to to keep away from the peer pressure. Right. This, but is this, that Juul's fault? Th none of this sounds like Juul's fault yet. No. There is an advertisement here that uh, that that purports to show a young person using it. So what? A, an eighteen-year-old person is allowed to make that choice, right? And you're allowed to market to young adults. Yeah. Ah, uh, now this has been filed by by lawyers. Like this is not a pro se thing. Yeah. I mean, it would it would depend. It depends on as many things in the details. You know, without without digging into the details of the actual complaint and seeing what they're actually alleging in terms of the marketing, in terms of the in terms of all those things, it's a little bit hard to judge on its face yeah. because it, it's going to get very fact specific. So it depends a lot on on the law fact specific yeah. details. Is it is it possible that the that the users actually do have a case? Yes. In in, in some hypothetical way. Yes. That we just we just don't haven't seen all the facts yet. Yeah. If Jewel did market directly to them. If Jewel has a bunch of internal communications that says we don't have enough fifteen-year-olds using our product, you know, let's let's get some fifteen-year-olds using it you in schools. Only, you can only pray that Jewel's not 
dumb enough to actually write that down? Yeah, yeah, so if if that turns out to be true, maybe. Yeah. And I say maybe because you're not allowed to use Discovery solely as a fishing yeah. expedition. You have to actually have some kind of... No, you're going to have to do it based on their overt marketing to get started. Yeah, so yeah. you can't just on... get their internal communications. You have to you have to make the complaint and, and have some sort of basis for the Discovery. Or if, like, the packaging or marketing, like, didn't make it clear it had nicotine in it. Like, if it's hypothetically possible that you bought some pod that had nicotine in it that yeah, wasn't, like, clearly marked, then maybe let's there's do a point this. case this, there. Let's, let's do this quick exercise here where we look for Jewel. Vape. Smoking alternative. You the must BC be 21. 21. Yes, in California, it's 21 to buy. Okay. And they oftentimes, they, they make their advertising campaigns based on California because there's a lot of people there. So. Yep. Okay, there is absolutely nothing on here that says anything about it containing nicotine. However, this is the page for the actual vape and not for the pods. Yeah. Yes. So let's shop the pods. But the so pods let's see if I like wanted Virginia tobacco. Five percent. Five percent. Five percent. What? Yeah, five. exactly. Oh, that says it's kind of in smaller uh, terms. And then that, it's kind that, of in small terms here. So the five percent, um, we current we um we measure us vapors. Uh, we measure our nicotine content in milligrams and not in um, percent. Um, the percent is left top. over from when, from when cigarettes did it. Point so seven milligrams. By, by saying percent, they're clearly trying. They are trying to market towards cigarette users by saying, you know, five percent. Um, a cigarette would be equivalent to me vaping eighteen milligrams of nicotine, which is a ridiculous amount in vape. That's like nobody vapes that. That's re that, that's like hard. That's hard. You so you I mean? say you measure in milligrams, and these are being listed in milliliters. So that is a um, point of potential liters, confusion. If you go to the sorry, if you go to the support page, it'll say um, that each pod is 0 0.7 milliliters with 5% nicotine, which is approximately 40 milligrams of nicotine per pod. Yeah, um, 0 0.7 milliliters. Are you sure? I'm reading it right now in front of me so the so only thing i'm seeing here pod. is that yeah. it isn't a hundred percent clear that nicotine is addictive yeah like so, if you don't know nicotine is addictive and you don't understand base yeah. the basics of that so yeah if the packaging itself doesn't like have a warning about the nicotine activity if it's not marketed marked here okay so this is this is potentially plausible it's plausible if if jewel really doesn't have anything warning about the inherent addiction yeah of nicotine yeah that's possible but then again does coca-cola have to have something about sugar or caffeine being addicting sugar is as addicting as cocaine from what i understand and I'm not even making um, that up. That's supposedly a National Institute of Health finding. I believe it. Um, in terms of um, selling nicotine products, like shouldn't there be uh, regulations just in general that if you sell a product that contains nicotine, it should come with the warning that this is addictive and cancer causing? Probably. Yeah. Like we have that in Canada. So I'm just yeah. wondering if that's in the US that yeah. it does. Just generically any nicotine product should have that warning. And maybe further down in Jules stream of sales, it does say that. Maybe before you buy it, you have to like you saw it says I it went on the package. Okay, but when I went to, to put it, even to purchase it from my cart, I had to agree to terms of service. Maybe there's something in there. Maybe there's more screens that say, reminder, this product contains nicotine. Maybe they just don't advertise it up front. But when you get it, by the time you actually put it in your jewel and you smoke it or vape it, you know that it contains nicotine and nicotine is addicting. If that's the case, then the company is probably closer to in the clear. But if they didn't do that, then yeah. maybe there's a case against them. I don't know. Yeah, so without digging into the facts of the complaints, it's a little bit hard to say, but we'll keep we'll keep watching. So that's our show, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And uh, I did spend two hours this morning in Fusion 9, making a little Lawful Masses fly in. Thank you very much to everyone who is supporting our channel in August. This is, of course, a community-supported channel. You can support on patreon.com slash ljfrench. 
Special thanks to the $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, John H. Anderson, Vera Montaigne, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Grunkle Tia Marie, and Michael Jones. Thank you very much for your support at the $50 level. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters. The LED panel is updating. And I don't know if it's coming through, but it is not flickering, right? Like, I have fixed the flicker, and all I've done is reduce the refresh rate to the 30 frames per second for the camera. On my end, it is flickering like mad. I can see all 30 frames, but on your end, it comes through fine. Okay. All right, everyone. I'll, I'll stop joking around. Have a good week. I'll see you in the in the vods that drop. You know where you are? Yeah, you're at the uh, the park. I'm gonna go for a walk. This is where we took you when you were first born. Go girl.